<laughs> First, let me tell you something about myself. When I graduated high school about almost eight years ago, I wanted to become a scientist. I wanted to create all these new, exciting things that re revolutionize the way we live. However, after working in scientific groups for about two years internationally, I found out that the world of science is a little bit different than I thought. What it's all about is publishing results in scientific articles. So this basically boils down to some ink on a piece of paper which, ironically, we call a paper. But don't get me wrong, this ink does contain very valuable information, but we have only captured the results. What happened to the rest of the scientific process? Is it lost? Is it not important? So I came across a very interesting quote by Nobel Prize winning scientist Richard Feynman, and one of my personal heroes. There isn't any place to publish what you actually did in order to get to do the work. But wait a minute, there's not a place to do this? This was maybe a problem back in 1965, but we have something now where we can publish this. It's called the Internet. But okay, of course, scientists have already discovered the Internet. Um, we are now sharing publications online even before they are published in the official journals. For the physics community, this is done on a website called Archive. Also, two of my colleagues are working on a way to expand Archive by allowing people to share tags, recommendations, and comments on these papers to start discussion. I think these are great initiatives, but I want to take this even a step further. Why don't we publish everything Exactly. The tools that you've created to do this research, to get your results, like software or even hardware. People will be able to benefit from the feedback you get from other users, and they will be able to benefit from the work you've done, so they don't have to reinvent the wheel. So most of these academic papers are only exciting to a handful of people in the world which is the scientific sub-community in which the paper was published. These scientific sub-communities, they sometimes even form a whole separate culture, you know, with their own language and gestures. Like in the research group in Delft that I work, worked in, we had this thing called the spin dance. It's not really a dance, but it's a way to show the quantum mechanical state on the block sphere. It goes like this. So we actually communicate with that. Um, but, yeah. So in this scientific <laughs> culture, we are stimulated to produce results and to write academic papers. We are incentivized to do so, like Michael Nielsen said. Why are we not incentivized to share more? So, in order to share more, I think we need to incentivize also sharing the rest of the scientific process. These papers, they are only prestigious if they are published in journals with a high impact factor. This impact factor is defined as the average number of citations a paper gets that is published in that specific journal. Peer review objectively determines if the impact factor of a certain uh, result or a certain paper is good enough for a certain journal. So if the goal is to create scientific impact, what does that really mean? Let's look at the definition. So impact is defined as the effect or influence of one person, thing or action on the other. Okay, this makes sense. But to me, when I read this, I think, okay, scientific effect, scientific influence, Shouldn't it influence people? Shouldn't it influence the way we live? But scientific impact is something completely different. Scientific impact means the effect results have on the field in a positive or negative way, progressing it or changing its direction. 
This is quantified very clearly in a number called the H index. The H index is called after Hirsch, a theoretical physicist, and it's defined as follows. So imagine a scientist has written NP papers. This scientist has index H. If H of those papers have at least H citations each, and the other NP minus H papers have no more than H citations each. So this is a very good definition because it clearly ensures that scientists create high quality results and do that more often. So you could say that if you're a successful scientist, you have a high H index. But it doesn't quite work the other way around always. I mean, if it's only about the results, I could also use some data I made up and then write a nice article about it and get a high H index, who will know? So we can prevent this by creating more openness, by sharing more parts of the scientific progress and also stimulating faster progression. So, in order to incentivize this, we have to find out what motivates scientists. To put it in the words of a poet, men love to wonder, and that is the seed of science. This is a quote that we can find our applied science building in Delft. And I think it really captures this part of human nature, this curiosity that we have in order to explore boundaries, new possibilities. And we can use this also as an incentive to share. We could say that, like Michael Nielsen said, by increasing our collective intelligence, we can solve more complex problems than was ever possible on your own. I'm not sure if this is the only incentive that scientists has, have. Couldn't there be more? How could we have wandered our way into modern society? Isn't there anything else? So, talking about incentives, science is currently usually funded by public money. However, there's a change coming. Institutes are being uh, stimulated to exploit their knowledge more, to engage in entrepreneurial activities. One university that was successful in creating an entrepreneurial environment was the KU Leuven. They created an environment in which 90 spin-offs have emerged. They have uh, built their own public, uh, their own venture funding, their own incubation fund, even a legal framework for knowledge transfer. But the combination of fundamental science and entrepreneurship is not uncommon. One company that was successful in achieving this is Bell Laboratories, or in short, Bell Labs. In this company, they have, during the last century, produced seven Nobel Prizes, but also made concrete contributions to society, like the transistor, the CCD camera, the laser, cell phones, and the C programming language. So, you could say that without them, the iPhone would have never existed. So, how did they do this? What is their secret? According to Chung Kim, Bell Labs president, scientists here are free to pursue whatever research they desire, but at the end of the day, it has to benefit the company. Okay, that makes sense. If you work for a company, your work has to benefit the company. But what's unique here is that the company's sake has provided a frame, a frame in which researchers were free to pursue whatever they wanted, like in academia. But what he also says, it can't just be science for science's sake. That's for academia. So that doesn't quite make sense to me, because apparently science for the company's sake has created this incredible creative environment. So why can't we have that also in the university? If we provide a frame in which creativity can blossom, I think in order to create more openness and to share more, we have to employ something called hybrid science. 
we need to find a way to balance both exploring and exploiting knowledge. So, but we need to incentivize this. We need to find a way to motivate scientists to do this. And for that, I think the H index is not enough. So hereby, I'd like to introduce to you the P index. So the P index is defined as follows. So imagine a scientist has created NT tools to produce the results in his research. Then that scientist has index P if P of those tools have at least P other users each and the rest of the NP minus P tools, NT minus P tools, have no more than P other users each. I think this is a great definition because it makes sure that scientists keep on creating tools that other people also want to use. So don't see this as a way to destroy the current system that we have. See it as a way to enrich it, to enhance publications with more in-depth knowledge by allowing others to access the things you have created to produce your results will you create more openness leading to more results faster scientific discovery because men love to wonder but to actually plant the seed of science we need a shovel <laughs>